This may look like a healthy forest, but it isn't. Eurasian shrubs and trees like buckthorn, honeysuckle, and Norway maple outcompete native vegetation because the insects and microbes that evolved to feed on them aren't here to keep them in check. They spread more berries than the natives, shade them out faster, and change the soil to inhibit their growth. Birds that feed on their berries leave droppings below the native trees they're sitting in, creating new sprouts whose roots take nutrients directly from the native plants. These trees can look a lot like the native plants we value as resources, move into areas without being noticed, and create expensive burdens for farming and the maple syrup industry. Japanese knotweed has aggressive roots that break off into water systems, covering and eroding riverbanks and destroying habitat for Vermont's fish. In the Champlain Valley, with adult invasives producing countless berries, buckthorn has reached a critical mass, filling in farmland as it goes unused and overtaking recreational areas with dense, thorny thickets, whose long-lasting pits support surges of mice and ticks. Biologists now see buckthorn and honeysuckle berries as the sugary junk food of the forest. Animals, especially birds and butterflies, are much better off with their native food and shelter, which is important in the timing of their life cycles. Restoring plants like dogwoods and viburnum supports better feeding and nesting environments and broader diversity throughout the local ecosystem. Human labor is the best way to remove invasive plants, not as a one-time effort, but through ongoing patrol and removal. Gas-powered equipment seems faster, but cuts indiscriminately, missing some of the target species and not leaving the native growth to regenerate. This is what a healthy forest looks like after just one season of work. Once the adult plants are removed and no longer producing berries, it's only a matter of pulling newly sprouted foliage a few times over the season, depending on sun and soil, until the roots are exhausted. All it takes is persistence. Our goal is to raise enough funds to maintain an ongoing stewardship of as much land as we can. Every donation goes right into the labor itself, so you can make a difference in public and lower income properties that would otherwise become a bigger problem. You'll be updated with pictures on when, where, and how much land gets restored, and every bit of property will be revisited continuously for years. You can support natural diversity and local heritage into the future.